What's up, y'all? I thought I'd come on this video and and share a little bit about my life. Um, this video may be different than other videos that I've posted in the past, but it's all the same lines of what I've been talking about for, for years. I watched this YouTube video called Dodash. That's her name, Dodash. And she was spitting mad knowledge. She was like, if you're over 50, you need to be on YouTube. You need to be sharing your knowledge. You need to be showing your wisdom. You need to be, this, this is the inspiration era. And I was like, man, sis, you talking to me. It's like all these years of knowledge that I've had, I need to share it. Um, I'm 55 years old, born 1969. Yeah, I look younger if I shave. It's like I, t I, I grew a beard to kind of look a little bit older because people be talking to me crazy, y'all. I mean, they be coming at me all sideways and stuff. And then when they find that I'm like either 10 or 15 years older than they are, they look at me like, bro, what you doing? I'm like, retin-ing. <laughs> I love going to the spa facials. I'm getting off track. See, I get squir I get squirrely moments. Um, I get it all the time. I've suffered from depression, ADD, um, suicidal thoughts back in the day. But I've learned in my wisdom how to identify my triggers, things that set me off. And I learned how to like take a step back to breathe and to really see what the gist of what's making me feel a certain way so I can get out of it, if that makes any sense. I, at my age now at 55, I wish I had somebody back when I, in my 20s giving me some wisdom. I think growing up the way I did, and I'm gonna tell some more of these series because I know I'm all over the place. As a young man, I really needed a true father figure in my life. I needed a true positive man who put his arm around me and said, look, young blood, we going to make it. I'm, I'm going to give you some wisdom. I'm going to give you this knowledge so you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. I wish I had that. My father's still living, but growing up, he was an alcoholic pretty much my whole life. He stopped drinking when I was an adult. So I don't know what that feels like. I have younger brothers. Um, I have half brothers. And this is going to be the first time I've said this, but I've never called my brothers half brothers. But deep down, I really wish I had a brother or sister that shared the same mom and dad as me. And I wouldn't say it bothered me to the point that growing up, I, you see me in my thoughts, right? I think growing up, I never had anybody to be a, an, a true ally to me that's what I mean a true ally not to say that my, my siblings aren't but it's different when you have this I feel when you have the same mom and dad and you're going through problems you can confide in your brother and sister like look man what's mom and what's dad tripping off of when we all we got because we're a product of them too that's how I feel um so yeah it really bothered me so growing up when I got married I told myself the greatest gift I can give my children is that you share the same mom and dad. That was me. I've always wanted to be a father growing up, always wanted to be a husband. Um, and it's funny I say that because my dad, even back in the day, he used to say, okay, so I have two brothers on my mom's side and two brothers on my dad's side. So hold that story in mind. So growing up, my dad used to say, yeah, you my domesticated son. And I didn't know what that meant <laughs> until I got older. I'm like, oh, okay, now I see why. So it's me and the next brother next to me. And then there's another brother. And I am 13 years younger than... Let me stop. I'm 13 years older than my youngest brother. Damn, that makes sense. <laughs> and we really don't have that much in common. Because I, I kind of raised him. Like when they would go to take trips, you know, I was the live-in babysitter because I was old enough to watch him. Um, yeah, and that was traumatic too because I couldn't be brother. I had to be like father figure. I had to be mom, you know, when they were gone for a couple of days, I had to feed him. I had to change his diaper. So stuff like that. So I dealt with traumas of my childhood. I dealt with being abused, molested at a young age, I survived domestic violence. I survived being wrongfully convicted. I did some time in San Quentin. 
And that's another story that we're going to go down. That's another rabbit hole. That's another video. I'm just trying to give you, I'm just trying to regurgitate all this stuff to give you some content to hopefully keep you coming back for more. Hopefully, you, hopefully you'll ask me more questions. And I'm not going to edit this video. I'm just leave it raw so you can actually truly see my thoughts and you can truly see my heart and hear the sincerity in my voice. So that's why I'm going to keep this video raw. I don't know how long I'm going to talk, but I'm going to just talk. I know you see some books behind me. So I'm currently a pre-med student. I'm at ASU. And uh, I'm leaning towards going to the Pathway Program. Yeah. I was going to take my MCAT th later this year and then see where I scored and then study for that and then, boom, apply for med school in 2025. That was the original plan. <laughs> but I'm part of the BMSA, the Black Medical Student Association at ASU, and we took a tour of, um, it was Midwestern. It's a MD, DO, it's a medical school. I'm leaning more towards DO because I see the whole body as a whole. Nothing against MDs. Um, if I'm an MD, hey, I'm an MD. I'm going to just shoot for the stars and aim for something, whatever I land on. So we toured uh, Midwestern and U of A was there. ASU and U of A have this pathway program, which guarantees you medical school and you get a master's degree. So I'm like, hmm, okay. It'll, it'll pretty much push back the MD thing just a few more months, maybe a, half, maybe a year. But hey, I get a master's. I can still work. And uh, that's the plan. So back on tr back on track. <sighs> Growing up, I wish I had a man to guide me. And I don't think men or sp sp specifically fathers know the true impact that they have on their young boys and girls. Um, boys specifically, because I think as a young man, He's like, yeah, I want to be strong like my daddy. You know, I want to have wisdom like my daddy. You know, I want to, I want to do what my daddy does. I, I strive to have that, and I didn't have that. So I think growing up, even as an adult now, I, I seek out older men to get to talk to, to give me that wisdom, to give me that knowledge. Because you got to think, they're living resumes. They are living encyclopedias. They lived these traumatic and difficult times that we don't really no, we have to like look at it on YouTube. We have to look at it and read about it in books. But these people actually lived it. Like, if you want to know some true knowledge, and I've done this, go to an old folks home. Go to a senior living facility and just talk to the old folks because they really want to share their story. Man, if you really want to get some juice, some tea, take your butt to the old folks home. Man, before my grandmother died, another story we got to talk about, remind me. Because it's traumatic, it's powerful. The reason why I don't talk to my father to this day. Hold that thought. Send me a comment. I'll tell you all about it. So, when my grandmother was sick and she was dying in Florida, she was on a uh, dementia ward because she suffered from dementia um, and malnutrition because she fell, broke her hip. She was in this ward. Sad story. And I was just walking around talking to the old folks. It was it was so enlightening. It was dear to me. This one woman who was sitting at the counter, she kept calling me her grandson. And then she was a white lady. So I'm like, okay, I'll be your grandson. <laughs> I'll be your grandson. So she would just talk. She would just talk. And I don't want to be rude. So I'm like engaging in conversation. So she was just talking about her life on the farm. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm one of your little, your little nie nieces. And I'm one of your nephews or whatever. So, and it was just giving straight knowledge because... She lived in a time back in the 40s when stuff was 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 rare for us. And I, I felt I was like behind the veil, so to speak, like she was giving me some, she was telling me, telling me some things that she probably shouldn't have said. But I was just soaking it all up. So if you ever want to know some knowledge, go to Ofo's home. I'm going to talk for one more minute. Um, I wish I would have had a mom and dad. And the same home. I wish I had that growing up. Because I was almost low-key. Not low-key. I was jealous of my friends who had mom and dad in the house. Because I didn't know what that was like. We had to watch. I, I can't say we. I had to watch movies like The Cosbys or Family Matters. And to like go, man, is that what it's like to have a mom and dad? Because I think you need both sides. You need that masculine side to go, no, son. You 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 fight for what you want. You work for it. This is what you do. You stand up. You stand on business. And yeah, I, I feel you need that mom with the softer touch to say, okay, son, 
I feel you. It's okay to cry. It's okay to let it go. I'm here for I'm your mama. It's okay. I think you need that too. And like I said, now at 55, I don't even know where to start. I see the younger generation. Some are good. Some are bad. Some are lost. Uh, bad in the sense that they just don't know. I can't say they bad, but I'm going to say that they just they just don't know. They just lost. And I was watching this, this, this channel. Like I said, DoDash, and she was like saying, people need your knowledge, you need to speak. God's telling me, and I, I felt she was talking to me. So shout out to DoDash. I'm going to tag her in this video and give her all the kudos and the credits. But I truly felt that God was really speaking to me through her. And I've heard many videos. I've watched a plethora of videos. And no one really spoke to me the way she did. And I'm just going to say again, thank you so much. So, I'm going to probably look at this video. No, I'm not. I ain't going to look at it again. I'm lying. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to post it and just hope it sticks. I hope the algorithm works out because I was so close to getting, you know, YouTube monetization. They took it away. Uh, they didn't take it away. It's like, oh, you, your channel's in review. We're going to see what's going to happen. And then, boom, I waited, 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 crickets, and all of a sudden... Okay, I got 11 hours away to get monetized. And now I'm like, I need 15 more because the, the watch hours are going down. So I'm like, okay, they don't like this one I'm posting. So let me just post me. And hopefully something that I say in the video resonates with somebody. But I just want to help. Um, I'll end with this. I have a, I have a part-time job at this beautiful five, six star resort in Scottsdale, beautiful. And then after that, I have this internship where I volunteer at a heat relief center, homeless shelter. It's actually a church and I help the homeless. I help those, the unsheltered community. So I'm around a lot of addicts, homeless folks, drug dealers that come through there that I, that's another story. I'm like, look, y'all can't be doing this here in the park. Y'all can't, that's another story. So I'm around two different extremes in the same day sometimes and someone asked me how do you do it i'm like how do you do what how do you volunteer i'm like you just volunteer they said no you go from one extreme to the next and i go it's a lot of decompression <laughs> i gotta really like because i'm an empath like i take on people's like i take it on because i'm a fixer and i want to fix problems i want to fix the situation and i'm learning to to know who to fix and who not to fix if you ask for help, I'm there. If you don't ask for help, I'm learning to not give too much, if that makes any sense. Um, so that's all I do. So I work, I go to school. I have two, we have two children, teenage daughters. That's another story. <laughs> ask me about that. Um, and that's it. I just go to work, school, home. I don't go out to clubs, I don't party. Um, let's say I didn't used to. Um, Cause your boy was notorious back in my single days. Woo, I was a hoe. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about that too. Um, you know you're a hoe when your mama call you a hoe. Hold that thought, leave me a message. I'll tell you more about that story in another video. But I just thought I'd come on and just give a thanks and a kudos to DoDash for just giving me the courage to actually show my strength and true vulnerability. That's another video that we're gonna talk about. But anyway, stay fit, stay focused. That's my hashtag. That's my catchphrase. And uh, I'll hopefully catch you in another video. I'm in the, I'm looking back and forth because I'm watching this video upload. So if you see my eyes like looking over here, that's what it is. I don't you think I'm, I'm not paying attention to our conversation because I'm truly engaged. Um, ask me about my skin products, you know, later on because I love going to the, I love going to the, to the spa. I love facials. Man, microdermabrasion is your friend. <laughs> I don't have any Botox. I got a few lines coming in. Look at your boy. See what I'm saying? But that's about it. Love water. Drink of water. And uh, I'm going to just keep it a buck and just say um, thank you. Thank you. I truly appreciate you. I hope whatever I said resonated with somebody. I hope somebody watches this 14, almost 15 minute video. If you do, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. You my tribe. If not, I'm going to just keep speaking the truth because I know by me leaving videos and me leaving a part of my heart, it almost immortalizes me because I know this video is going to last longer than me. So with that said, I love you. Stay fit, stay focused, and you can do it.
I believe in you. If you can believe, if you can see it, <laughs> you can achieve it by now.